Welcome, everybody. I'm glad that you're here. Excited to get into today's scripture. Um, I actually thought about you, Jules, when we were in this conversation, and so uh, me, you, all of us experience what Simon of Cyrene experienced. And so let's jump into the story. As you know or not know, Simon of Cyrene is the guy who carried Jesus' cross. So let me paint the picture for you. Cyrene is in North Africa. I am. I did not put a Bible verse down because I'm going to be using all of the different Gospels. Um, it's from North Africa. He's making a trip from North Africa to Jerusalem for the Passover celebration. Okay, He's probably a Jew... As the Greeks had established a Jewish colony in Cyrene, he's probably a convert to Judaism, okay? Because Jews don't come from that region of the world. So um, he's not of Jewish blood, but he is a God-fearing man. A God-pursuing man was presented with the God of the Old Testament and You know what happens when you're looking for God, he introduces himself. He shows up. So he's interested in God, and God says, I want you. Now, 100,000 pilgrims would make the trip to Jerusalem annually. It's a -a once-in-a-lifetime trip, and making the trip to Jerusalem was probably on his bucket list. And um, it's the focal point of the Hebrew heritage. It's where Abraham uh, sacrificed, almost sacrificed Isaac. It's where uh, King David and the prophets dwelt. You come to Jerusalem, and if you've ever been there, it's quite an experience. Um, I understand that the walls were higher than they are right now. So we have these huge, I don't even know. Larry, how high are the walls? 18 feet, 6 inches. Okay. Okay. I'm pretty sure they're a little taller than that. But, you know, you know they, these walls have been torn down a few times. They've been built up. Um, so these are very tall walls right now. King Herod has made sure that Jerusalem is a spectacular place. Um, the temple, oh my, just 100% amazing. And so it's 800 miles away from his home. And 800 miles away in the old days... Is a long ways. You know, it's interesting. We would go from from um, Ammon to to Israel, and you know, I read about how the Ammonites would attack the Israelites. Okay, and it's just like a day and a half's car ride for us. For them, moving an army would have been, you know, at least a month. And, and to go 800 miles, you know, this, is, this would take months. It's an enormous sum of money to make the trek. He probably sailed to Joppa, okay? He's coming from the other side of the Mediterranean. He goes to Joppa. Um, this is on the coast. Simon comes to find God at the very point the prophet Jonah ran from God. Just something to think about. So here he is, he, he, uh, he arrives at Joppa, he comes to Jerusalem, he gets to the gates, the day the Passover lamb is being sacrificed, his mind is filled with the great worship of God that's about to take place in the temple, and he's walking the narrow streets that has merchants on either side, and there's this commotion coming his way, and he hears the crack of the whip, and he realizes, oh, It's a death march. Somebody's getting crucified. You can see the three crosses that are being carried, you know, coming down the way. People being shoved out of the way, the way, the gentle way the Romans would do it. It's a crucifixion. And one man has a crown of thorns beaten into his brow. And he can see that he's struggling under the weight of, of the heavy beam. Well... As he's pushed aside, 
the man with the heavy beam and the crown of thorns falls to his knees right in front of Simon of Cyrene. There he is. Now, the Romans only crucified criminals, so there's the criminal. And as he's standing there, he can see that Jesus has lost a lot of blood. Um, he can really see that Jesus has had the 39 lashes, okay? Um, and then his trip to Jerusalem takes an unexpected turn. One of the Roman soldiers says, You! Pick up that cross. Now, Rome controlled the world, and what the Roman soldiers said to do, you had to do. You were required by law to carry their equipment for one mile. That's the law. And here it is. Uh, the Roman says, you pick up the cross. Well, talk about being at the wrong place at the wrong time. Okay. Uh, he had no choice but to comply. It says in Matthew and Mark that he had to be compelled. I'm not going to do that. You are going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Out comes the sword. You will do that. And again, Simon is now being associated with a criminal. Usually crucifixion was kept for vile criminals. Um, He's picking up a cross now, covered with blood. And, and I want you to understand something. He's not just hoisting wood on his shoulders. He now has to intertwine his arms with this guy carrying the cross so that together they're now going forward. Well, it's a little bit of an issue here. You see... Um, his clothes, his Passover best clothes, the clothes that you put in your suitcase for the moment to go into the Passover feast in the temple, that's what he's wearing. Soaked with the blood of this man. But it gets worse. The crowd is jeering. The bystanders are mocking. People are spitting at him. Uh, Simon came to seek and honor God, and instead his trip has turned into a nightmare. Um, This blood that is on him will now render him unclean and unable to go into the temple for the only reason that he's in Jerusalem. To go into the temple. I don't know if you've ever had a vacation ruined. Okay. This just happened. To Simon of Cyrene. Okay. And and, you know the fact of the matter is. um, You know what it's like to slip and fall. To get sick. Okay. To get hurt. Um, No refunds. Unless you're savvy. Ah. Yeah, this is all bad. This is what happened to Simon of Cyrene. And here's what's so incredible. If he was five minutes earlier or five minutes later, this wouldn't have been an issue. If he came through a different gate, wouldn't have been an issue. If only he would have stopped at one of the merchants and picked up a, a, a couple of palm dates to chew on wouldn't have been an issue but it happened he didn't volunteer he was conversed coerced but as he's carrying this cross he's now noticing it says on the sign above jesus king of the jews written in three different languages um, he also noticed that jesus isn't angry like the other two people carrying their crosses. He actually has an attitude of compassion, not remorse. And whatever brief conversation they had, Simon could see the cruelty and injustice being done to this lovely, gracious man. Well, they finally get to the garbage heap 
where criminals are killed and they drop the cross into a, a hole in the ground after they nail Jesus' hands and feet into the cross. And so Simon would probably stand there. He's checking it all out. I mean, his, his, where's he got to go, right? Can't go anywhere. And you'll hear the first words of Jesus. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. This is Simon's experience. Only a holy man, not a criminal, would utter these words. And so now I'm just going to ask you to imagine wrapping your arms around the Son of God and helping Him as He prepares to give His life for the salvation of the world. Sounds so romantic, doesn't it? So noble. But the reality? No. You wouldn't have wanted to do it. You might even know what's going on and still pause. Think of the eye contact that they would have had. No doubt Jesus would have blessed him, thanked him. You know the heart of the Lord, the way he worked. And there would be the blood of Jesus. And I want you to feel this. This blood is different than yours and mine because there's an eternal component as well as a human component. This is a different kind of blood. This is the blood, the Son of God, all over you. Well, <clears throat> you can know that as Simon drifts away, his followers would have come up to him and said, Hey, do you know who that was? That's the miracle guy. He does all, he heals the sick, he raises the dead. He's, he, we think he's the Messiah. You, you carried the cross of, of the one we thought was the Messiah. And he would hear about the remarkable life of Jesus Christ and how he would care for people who were hurting. The parables, no doubt he was quoted. Then, like you come to the town of Jerusalem, you know, he doesn't get to go into the temple, but he's in Jerusalem. And you know, it's not like our trips where you fly into Disney, take a few days and fly out. You usually came and stayed for a little while. So here we have a unique situation where he's in Jerusalem. He's the one who helped carry the cross. He's the one who was shamed, who had his trip ruined, only to find out that that guy whose cross that he helped carried and was dead has come back to life. He's resurrected. Oh my, what do we do with this news? Okay. And, and, and it's at this point that the Christ followers are now beginning to understand the Messiah. Remember it says in the scripture that the Holy Spirit helped them understand after the fact. And so here it is, after the fact. And now it was necessary for Jesus to die for the sins of the world and rise from the dead. And it's all happened and they're all figuring it out and the Lord himself is giving them insights and wow I was part of that man's journey did you ever consider yourself as part of Jesus' journey because you are Jesus is still journeying in 2023 right here right now and you and I get to be you can choose to be a spectator or you can participate with him. And, and I think it's kind of interesting that Simon learned that the blood that made him unclean for the Passover was actually the blood that makes all of us fit to enter God's presence. Here's what I want you to see. Of all the random people in Jerusalem, God said, you, Simon of Cyrene, you're going to 
carry this cross because you are seeking after me. You have come to make a sacrifice, but actually I'm making the sacrifice for you. You're interested in me. You found me and you found all of me. This is incredible. Well, the Pentecost would be 50 days later. Again, it was customary to stay a month or two. Could you imagine? I know, we know that he stayed a month or two because when Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit fell upon all the disciples, it's Simon hears the message of Jesus from the Lord's disciple Peter that Jesus was crucified as the sacrifice for our sins, rose from the dead, which was the big commotion in Jerusalem. And here's why I say Simon is here, because Luke tells us that in the crowd that heard this message were people from Cyrene. Oh, Simon of Cyrene. He would have been listening intently. People are crying out, what must we do to be saved? Repent, be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. You'll receive the Holy Spirit. This is this man's experience. Gets better. I mean, can you imagine holding Jesus up while he's going to give his life for the sins of the world? The participation with the most crucial event in the history of humanity and he got the call unbelievable okay now I don't know about you but if this would have happened to me I might have got bitter I came all this way and this is what happened to me came here for the Passover couldn't even do it some criminal got in my way okay some people would claim this is unfair. Some people would be angry. Um, this was a God opportunity. And I guess I'd like for you and me to start thinking about situations that we don't like as actually God opportunities. Things that we're mad about are actually God interventions. Things that don't make sense or somebody got cheated, it was unfair. Do you think that God's not involved? He's involved. When you belong to Him, He's involved in your life. And He has what? Nothing but good plans for you. Um, I call it a divine interruption. I've called it God's plan B. I like my plan A, but he has a plan B. And sometimes plan B is for your well-being and you don't even know it. I was reading about this Dr. Vincent Senna. He was a young medical officer during World War II. He's enjoying a night out with this date and he reaches up and unscrews the light bulb so he can have a romantic kiss with his date. And right then his pager goes off this woman's in labor. It's difficult. We need you to come to the hospital immediately. He's so frustrated. Leaves the table. Goes to the hospital. Finds out later that moments after he left, one of the staff members lit a match. The entire place exploded. 490 people killed. That pager from the hospital saved his life. I guess that interruption that ruined his evening actually was the best thing that ever happened to him. And this interruption that ruined Simon of Serene's journey, best thing that ever happened to him. So, let's keep moving. Simon stepping in Jesus' footsteps under the foot of the cross, is this not the dramatic image of what you and I are called to do? step in Jesus' footsteps and pick up our cross and follow him. Something that I've kind of been th thinking about this season of sacrifice series that we've been going through. The cross that we pick up, it's our cross, but really it's his cross. Because of his cross, we join our cross with his. His cross 
supersedes our cross. So any cross you pick up in the name of Jesus is attached to his cross. So you're invited to participate in the life of Jesus Christ when you have to carry your cross and it seems overwhelming and it's burdensome and it's frightening and you don't know what the future holds. Guess what? It's connected to Jesus' cross and you know exactly what the future is there. Heaven and the presence of God available to you right now. Suddenly picking up our cross, sacrificing our lives, it's not as difficult or frightening as we once thought. You know, Clarence Jordan, he was the author of the Cotton Patch Gospel, and he was taking a tour of a church, you know, that imported luxurious pews and decorations, and they bought a $10,000 cross to put on top of the, the, the sanctuary, and he, he mused, wow, there was a day when you could have got one of those for free, okay? And sometimes, you know, we, we're, we think it has to be this elaborate sacrifice when actually like what I talked about on on Sunday Saint Francis of Assisi you know he's when the more he tried to be holy the 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 less holy he felt this is simple application in Christianity that that's what's required and I say simple application that means forgive people you don't want to forgive deny yourself forgive invest in people it be inconvenienced all this is part of the Christian journey. Okay? And so for you and me, um, yeah, you pick up the cross, it's not always going to be easy. But may I remind you this, there are times when the forgiveness of sins feels like a weight's been taken off of your shoulders, when the grace of God is extended to you and you feel empowered, when the gift of eternal life gives you hope when things aren't working out in this world, when the blessings that come to you because you're connected to Jesus, guess what happens? All of a sudden, yeah, sometimes the cross is heavy, sometimes the cross is glorious, okay? Answered prayers, protection. But let's be honest, carrying Jesus' cross has a splintering edge. No doubt that the cross that Simon of Cyrene carried, left a splinter in his back. They didn't polish things up, okay? This was meant to hurt. And it would have hurt him, okay? And some of us have emotional scars, spiritual scars, from going through our Christian journey, and other Christians hurt us. The church let us down. And you can do one of two things. Lots of people say, the church let me down, I'm leaving. Those, those Christians were mean, I'm done. I did a, my doctorate on why people don't come to church. Oh my gosh. Well, somebody was mean. What happened? They said this. So you left the church and, you left your personal church and the church of Jesus because somebody said that. Well, I mean, at the time it was heavy. Yeah. You know, you should hear what my best friends tell me, you know. That's nothing. And people are so temperamental. If you're here for Jesus, you're going to go, huh, can't believe she said that to me. I better forgive her because we got a, we got spiritual work to do. Okay? That's what it's all about. I forgive you, you forgive me. Together we become the body of Jesus. And the best thing about conflict resolution is resolution. The healing that comes when I say, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to let my sinful self out. Would you forgive me? And now now you have an invitation to go deep spiritually and say, I forgive and I reinvest. I remember you said that two years ago, which is such a powerful statement. To forgive means to reinvest. And that's real Christianity. It's just so powerful, so intense. Well, I don't know. Here's where it gets a lot of fun now, friends. There's a good reason to believe Simon didn't throw the cross down and be done with Jesus because the Gospel of Mark lists Simon's sons, Alexander and Rufus. 
Okay? Um, Romans 16, 13 also, Paul writes, Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother, who has been a mother to me. So, when Simon came to Jerusalem with his entourage, his family, looking for Jesus, Jesus picked him to carry the cross. Jesus picked him to become a disciple. Jesus picked him and his family to be part of the larger group of disciples. Okay, something happened to Simon. They became leaders in the church of Rome. Oh my. But can you imagine anything less than the guy who carried the cross with Jesus? How could you not carry the cross and not become a leader in his church? It gets better. In Acts 13, Luke gives a list of men who sent Paul and Barnabas out on the first mission trip to the Gentiles. Along with Barnabas was Simeon, who was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene. Simeon is the same word as Simon. In other words, the key visionary leaders of the great mission church at Antioch were Simon and Lucius, both from Cyrene. So in other words, the man that helped carry Jesus' cross also carried Jesus to the rest of us. And this is where it gets fun for you and me. Because we get to receive Jesus. But are we carrying Him anywhere? This is an important question. Um, Moses said, send someone else. <laughs> Lots of disciples said, no, thank you. Remember in John 6, 6, 6, many of them left. But when you stay connected to Him, even when you don't understand, even when it's ugly, when it doesn't feel good, when there's a splintered edge, when you might have to forgive somebody, that's when life comes alive in each one of us. You know, Simon was forced to carry the cross. Jesus carried it voluntarily. Okay? Remember, he could have called down a legion of angels. No. And, and friends, this is how it happens to us as we go through life. You know, we turn the corner and Jesus is going to say, will you accept my cross? Let my self-denial be your self-denial so that my life becomes your life. And, and there's a decision you and I have to make regularly. You know, yesterday I got to have two conversations. I had to go get two different... I, I got one test for my thyroid. And um, they sit down, this woman and I walk in at the same time and you know, I didn't know where I was going, so she's like, follow me. So I go to the desk, she goes to the desk, and I go, well, since you guided me in, I'm going to sit next to you. And so while we're waiting to be called, I strike up a conversation, and I'm trying not to be Pastor William, okay? I'm just trying to see how far I can go into the conversation and create a dynamic, because once I say Pastor, you know, it's a different conversation, okay? People get up and move, stuff like that, you know? And so she kept saying words that weren't our Bible words, but they smacked of spirituality. So I'm, I'm tuned in. I'm, I'm tuned into everything she's saying, you know, because I'm looking for my moment. And then she sees my, my phone, okay, and she goes, that phone looks like a Bible. I'm in. Okay? And, and so, we had the most delightful conversation. It got so deep spiritually. It was truly an, an, an invigorating interaction. Okay? But now, what am I doing? I'm thinking in terms of how can I create an, 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 inter, an interactive moment? Okay? So... This is how I want you to think. Now I get into another conversation with somebody that I did not like, somebody that did not like God, somebody that um, I just wanted to be done with, and I wanted to move. And the Lord said, you know, I, I, uh, <clears throat> I, I died for that person. 
I like that person. I'm like, oh, okay. So I was woofing off about the Lord and the evolution. Evolution? Well, on Sunday, I talked to a guy here who's writing a book about evolution, and he loaded me up with all kinds of arguments on Sunday so that on Monday, when I have a conversation with a guy listing off things about evolution, guess who's prepared? And it was really fun because it got to be this place where he's talking about the concept of God, and I'm talking about a personal friend of mine. You know, and he pointed it out, like, wow, you know. And I, I just had a lot of joy letting somebody that I prefer not to be in a conversation with lead them into the awareness that your way of thinking is incorrect because of all these experiences that I've had and what the Bible really says and what evolution really means. And I don't know what's going to happen. Now what happens is he runs into another Christian and the other Christian will pick up where I left off because the Holy Spirit's involved. Right? This is how it works. You and me. Being willing to to deny my comfort zone. And and these are are cross-carrying moments. You might ask, why me? Why not me? Well, I'm not ready. The Spirit of God's going to speak through you. And maybe it's not anything that you have to say. You can just go, man, those thoughts are above my pay grade. But I know, my pastor says, there's no argument lifted up against Christianity that isn't answerable. And so all you have to do is go on the internet and type in the, the question, and there will be a biblical answer. It's just that easy. I had a guy in my office this morning, and he's talking about scientists, and he goes, scientists, you know, <clears throat> they find huge spears in Gath, all right? And Golgath is the name of the place, and Golgath is where Goliath was, okay? And they find, you know, these spears that are, I don't know, like, five, six times bigger, taller. They find chinks of, of armor that if they were on one person, they would actually be for five people. And so the, the atheist, non-believers, scientists go, well, these spears are too high for a real person, so they must be tent pegs. Oh, and this armor, well, it must be for many different you know, coverings, many different, you know, personal armor. And, and he just, then he went into all these scientific reasonings how they, they find that their scientific conclusions, this one doesn't fit, that one doesn't fit, the other one doesn't fit, and so they just keep reinterpreting every one rather than considering the fact that there was an initial cause and a supreme being behind the creation. But if we pray, we can change people's minds. And so I want you to think about these terrible interruptions as, as actually a door to life for us and others. And, and let's be honest, people are seeking meaning. It's a lot of folks struggling, a lot of folks being overwhelmed with pain. And you and I, in the midst of our struggles and pains, well, we have a problem solver. We have someone who comforts. We have someone we can turn to. Okay? And you and I, we have something to give to the world around us. Well, Simon, he ended up carrying the cross that would be the once and for all sacrifice for everybody's sin. And um, Jesus says, pick up your cross and follow me. You know, we took him seriously and we went down to 192 where there's a whole bunch of people that we brought the cross of Jesus in the form of the Community Hope Center so that people can get their broken lives fixed and healed. 
Okay? That's what we did. Sometimes the cross finds you. When you come across that person and you're the only one. Okay? This is your moment to live out your Christianity or to pass it by. And we all know those moments, and we passed it by. We figured it out too late. And the moment's gone. The opportunity's over. And if only, if only. Well, I think God had a divine appointment with Simon of Cyrene, and I think he does with you. And here's the most special statement I'll make today. It's when those divine appointments happen that I believe they become the most meaningful moments of our spiritual journey. When we step in and get dirty, be inconvenienced, invest our time and money and emotions in somebody else experiencing Jesus Christ. There's nothing else. There's, you can't go on a boat ride or a vacation or a beautiful dinner that's more exciting than seeing Jesus Christ released through your life. Okay? These unexpected encounters. Okay? And I think sometimes the Lord calls on us to go reach those who are on the verge of giving up. You know, I had this experience where I, I walked into this Sunday afternoon. I went to this kid's, this kid asked for me to come to his, the hospital bed. And the moment I walked in, he just burst into tears. He's hurting so much. He's not hurting physically. His, 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 his emotions, it's a lot for a little 12-year-old to, to you know, have brain surgeries and to just feel like, am I going to be okay? Why did God allow this? You know, and so I took him to the chapel, and I just invested all this time into him, a couple hours. And, and you know what? You get to be that person. It might not be the hospital. It might be your next-door neighbor. It might be a family member. It might be a good friend. Okay? You and I need to be talking Jesus, speaking Jesus, letting people know that Jesus is around. And remember this, when you help the least of them, you're helping him. Okay? And let's be honest, Galatians 6.1, you know, you who are spiritual, restore those who have fallen. It's up to us to help those who have fallen to be restored. And sometimes we carry them on. Moms carry the family on their backs. Some athletes carry the team on their backs. Okay? Some, some employees carry the load at work. I got some Christians here that carry, carry the church. And uh, when all of us take a piece and we all carry it, then it becomes our ministry and it becomes the body of Jesus and he becomes a glue and something radically special happens here in the church. Well, we can follow in Simon's footsteps to carry Jesus' cross by carrying Jesus out into the world. I want to say this, the very thing Simon did not initially want to do was his greatest pride in eternity. And can you imagine when we were singing, Were you there when they crucified the Lord? He would say, uh, Actually, I was. <laughs> okay. And you and I get to be too. If we want to pick up his cross and unite our cross to his and watch the miraculous hand of God move through us. Amen?